something's happening. No, something. Oh, where I see something happening. <laughs> it looks like it's got live on Facebook. Let's see. Let's go to the page. Wonderful. Yep. Should be in the group. Yeah. I see us live. We're in there. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. So everyone tuning I in, see us. Uh, thank you for joining us here. I'm just going to, beautiful, beautiful. I'm just going to take a moment and just hit the record button on my end. <clears throat> okay. Wonderful, man. All right. So you know how things can go sometimes. But with a little perseverance mm -hmm. and a little bit of uh, divine assistance, we 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 work things uh, work things out. So, anyway, uh, brother, thank you for being here today. Good we'll job, brother. Started. Thank you, yeah. thank you. <laughs> uh, so anyway, we have uh, we have the brother Jason Michael Powers uh, here live with us today. And uh, it's an honor to have you here today, Jason. And uh, came across Jason just through my Thank travels, you. through working through the the ocean of Facebook and making connections. Yes, making connections and uh, making new relationships, and you know, coming across like-minded individuals. And we we made our connection and uh, saw that there was a real residence i think between who we are and what we're about and stuff like that so we got into some conversation and had a had a chat and i uh, thought it would be a great opportunity to introduce uh jason to our community so um what i'd like to kick off with today jason um and and is is are, are you hearing any sort of delay or anything right now or are you thinking we're we're all right I hear you good, but I think there might be a slight delay in our in our back and forth. Okay, well, we'll just have to be patient, I guess, with that. And uh, so, anyone, in, uh, we were working through some technical stuff. If so, if you are hearing any delays, then please bear with us. We'll do our we'll do our best here today. Um, but what I wanted to do, Jason, was just go ahead and read this bio that you sent here today, and. Uh, or that was sent to me a couple days ago, and I went ahead and kind of changed your bio just to kind of like in a description format. So I want to read that. Um, I'll begin with that now, and then I'll let you do an introduction here. But what I have here is um, Jason began his awakening after 9-11-2001 when those twin towers fell. He had a profound shift that has guided him to be an awakener on this planet in many ways. He's a licensed practitioner in the science of mind meaning he was one who prays in a way that miracles occur, aligning his mind with the, one, with the one supreme mind and creating a new cause that will demonstrate a new effect, a.k.a. a miracle. A prayer warrior, he spent 10 years of his life in traditional Christianity, left it in 1997, saddened by the God that was being taught in that religion. He has journeyed into the cosmic realms of what it means to walk as a living Christ. His wife and beloved Heather and his beloved Heather Grace are love and soul coaches who have created what is called the powers of love where they awaken love those individuals or couples who are wanting to heal the heart mind and soul around partnerships relationships and their own belief system around the greatest force in the universe which is love his beloved heather and he bring music and mantra in song all over the world and sat songs and sound healing concerts He's been a DJ produce, uh, producer for close to 30 years, produced uh, over 2,000 events nationally and internationally. And he's holding the key codes for the rising healing masculine, for the brotherhood to be rebirthed from the mother's womb. And he is a grateful father to an avatar who is 13. To sum it up, he's an embodiment of God essence, here to reveal the true I am that we are and restore Eden. It's a mouthful. Thank you, brother. Yeah, it is. It is. Thank but you, it, 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 thank you, brother. It, it does give a good overview of who, of who you are. And, you know, going back through this, it reminds me of so many of the things I first noticed about you that uh, I, I, I felt was a, was a, 
a, a fit between you know who we are um so what i wanted to do was maybe just um I, i'd love to start maybe just to kind of fill in um maybe a little bit about who you are your story uh, that you think would be relevant to you uh, for the brothers here in the community yeah thank you brother just first of all honoring you and in, in the space that you've created here in the uh you know, the, the key word being noble, you know, bringing nobility, <clears throat> what that truly means and unpacking that and how it's connected with um, porn and how we're being called forth to rise and heal. And I just applaud you. And as I've said before, you've put a stake in the ground and said, look, this is where we're meeting. We're going to call forth and the men that are coming in to rise together. So I greet you from that place, that one heart space that we dwell in. Uh, all of you that are listening now and forever, whatever now that is, it's going to be your now. That's what I know. Amen. So, <clears throat> um, you know, in a nutshell, I had an awakening in 2001 uh, after being in 10 years of traditional Christianity and struggling with um, this addiction in the times and um, took a journey and understood what it means to um, live a conscious life. Um creating my life consciously, purposefully, intentionally, and, um, and taking this journey and in relationship, went through a marriage, pornography ruined it, <laughs> to be honest with you, it was, a, it was a struggle. And I spent a couple of years in, in recovery at that time to try to get help. But it's um, this journey that I've been on is about knowing that I've always known that there's a power, there's some kind of all power. I didn't know, you know, I learned about it on my own, going to church and Christian churches, understanding to follow the teachings of the Bible and, and to be a good human, to be a loving human and to, to follow God, to be a lover of God and whatever that meant. Um, and it's taken quite a journey of uncovering that, realizing that there, the power that I have within me that's within all of us is this power and it is love, it is beauty, it is wisdom, but it's, it's a journey that I've gone on and I continue to go on. Um, you know, ultimately, <clears throat> I, w I do wanna preface this, everything that I say here, we say here, I always say, take what you like and leave the rest. You know, I'm here just to, as, a, as a brother who's walking this path like you are, that wants to, to be free, that wants to be happy, that wants to be liberated and abundant in, in, in healthy relationship with life. And so my intention is to, to speak from that place um, and to know that this conversation of, of making peace with porn, I love that you say that, you know, that can be, people go, you mean porn's good, bad? I don't know what you're saying there, <laughs> you know, but really making peace with this, this thing. It's, it's a really, um, it's a great conversation. So <clears throat> I don't know if I've answered that question, if I've unpacked, but I'm sure more will come out as we journey this, but ultimately I just want to help liberate us to realize that there's a power for good in the universe and it dwells within us yeah. and we can uh, access this power consciously and intentionally to free ourselves up to live a great life. Beautiful brother. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. And, and like I said, I, I resonate and relate to so much of your journey coming from uh, and being, being raised in the Christian church myself also want to note, I, I know that you do music and you do, it uh, sounds like uh, maybe some kirtan and some sat song. I also do the same. I play tabla and stuff like that. So I've worked nice. with, the, with, the, with the kirtan collective here in our area. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's very, that's very cool, man. But I, but I thought it might be cool. We kind of talked about this a little bit as we were kind of prepping for this conversation today. I would love, I would love for you to maybe share a little bit, if you would, uh, and open up for you just to kind of maybe give some, some, some context for, for your, from, where you're coming, your lens, your perception of life, of your relationship with God and, and Christ, and maybe some of the language that you use around that. Mm -hmm. Good question. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, I grew up in a, in a home that we didn't go to church. Um, the first time I ever stepped foot into church was with my best friend, Daniel Kretzer in, in like elementary school. And I went to sleep over and I went to Catholic church with them. And I was interested. I was like, what is this? Because we grew up with Bibles. We grew up understanding Christmas and Easter, but as a family, we really didn't go to church. It wasn't part of our practice. It wasn't part of our belief system or my social programming. Um, but I remember going in there and going, this feels 
o-ring what is this <laughs> this is kind of get down on my knees and get back up and do all the rigmarole and i didn't feel i fit in there um and then uh, i remember a guy came to me on the street when i was a kid teenager and gave me a pamphlet and prayed with me about you know the importance of jesus being in my heart and and I, you know, I put all that to the side, but I always had this fascination. I remember as a kid, I grew up watching Jesus Christ Superstar on TV and it blew me away. And I would listen to the album at my mom and dad's house. And I'm like, who is this Jesus guy? He can like, he, all animals come to him, kids come to him. I'd read my Bible as a kid. I'm like, I want to be just like him. This guy's awesome. And that was from my pure, like, I just want to know more about why we have this Christmas, why we celebrate this this. Who is this being named Jesus? And so it was a really deep, you know, magnet to whatever that was. And not until high school did I, my brother was going to a youth group at the time and he was going out and going bowling and going golfing. And he was going to all these things with the kids. And I was bored at home and I thought, well, I'll go with wherever you're going. And I started jo joining the youth group activities and, and I found out what it was. And I was, remember, I'll never forget going to this church and they're raising their hands, speaking in tongues. I'm like, this is freaking weird, but there's chicks in here. So I'm going to keep <laughs> coming. <laughs> so I stuck in that and uh, started Bible talk in my high school. I really caught the wind of what this is. And I really understood from a spirit sense of what Jesus was teaching. And I wanted to do it. And so I wanted to go to Bible college and go into it. I was part of an Assemblies of God ministry and Left that, came into uh, Los Angeles in 1990. Uh, I got invited to be part of what was called the Church of Christ, which was a very big church out here in Los Angeles. Ended up growing to about 10,000 when I left it in 97. But all of it was just, I really wanted to love God. I wanted to, to I, I saw a world that was heavy. Um, and I knew that there's something about the teachings of Jesus that had an answer to a lot of our problems. And but I really in the in the Christian churches, I had a hard time with with lust and pornography and no one was teaching me about um, it was a dirty topic. It was something that was kind of suppressed. It was not talked about. It wasn't um, integrated. And uh, I felt really bad being involved in something that I, eventually, to be honest with you guys, I remember praying. I, I fell in the. Um, what they call in the church, I fell into sin. I made out with my girlfriend in the church and we were forced to break up. We were in leadership and it took two years of really feeling a heavy guilt and shame. And I would journal and journal in my journals to God, why do I have this problem? Why is this going on inside me? I can't break it. I want to be better. I would confess my to my brothers. I would, you know, I have mentors and disciples in my life. And it was such an ongoing struggle for me. And eventually I had to leave that organization, that organism of whatever that was, because I really was having a hard time buying the God of, of this understanding was going to punish me. But I felt like, God, you created me this way. Why, why are you, this seemed like a big tease. And I said, you know what? I got to walk away and leave that. And my journey led me to meditation. Eventually, after the towers went down in 2001, something shifted and I started meditating. And it was there in my first meditation that I cried, I wept um, because I felt the presence of God that I missed since I left the Christian church in 97. And I had it in my own room and I had this sacred place and I could go on walks and I could be. And I'm like, church is in my house, it's in my room. I don't need to go out and be in part of the church. But in that journey of meditation and, and, and continuing this awakening journey, you know, I, as I often say, I left the Jesus of this organization and came to understand Christ and understood this light, this presence, this emanation. You know, we call it many names, and I think we fight over many different names that we call it, but it's there's some kind of energy that I realized was in me. And I realized I've come to fully understand that that was a magnet to the Christ, to the, to the, you know, I call them my brother, my elder teacher, my master teacher, that has shown me the way to live in this world in union with the beloved presence of God that gives me victory and triumph over sin and knowing that's missing the mark. When I believe I'm separate from this power, this source, then 
I'm grown to do things that I don't want to do because I'm looking. I found that pornography and, and, and lust were just seeking love, trying to get love in an unskilled way. Um, and so when I say come, you know, living a living Christ, I, all of us have this spark, this light, this, you know, this energy, call it many different names. And now it's been called the threefold flame. It's, it's the God spark, you know, it's, it's an Iron Man heart, you know, <laughs> it's, there's this, this light inside of us that I know to be the Christic, the Christic energy, uh, the Christic light, that which was in Yeshua, that which was in this man, Jesus Christ isn't unique to him it's in, it's inside each one of us and so to live in the embodiment of that is my intention my my, my focus for my life and for my beloved beautiful brother thank you so much for sharing i think that that does give some really nice context i think to to, to your story and what you're sharing here today I'm, I'm wondering if maybe you can talk you know since we we do focus a lot in this community on the on the conversation around pornography and sexuality I wondered if maybe you could talk a little bit about maybe what what did the process of your maybe like the evolution of your sexuality or the evolution of your relationship with pornography um, look like as you were able to kind of navigate uh, that process? You know, pornography has a hold on on so many men, and and at some at some points in our life, it feels like something that it's like almost impossible to to uproot from our lives. What did that process of liberation? Um, look like for you what did that path or maybe, maybe what were some of the key the key components of that process look like for you mm -hmm. good question so i um you know i i grew up in a uh, an alcoholic home you know so i i found my uh, addiction to porn when i found my father's magazines at 11 years old and growing up and and and, and so it began this journey of this feeling and wanting this feeling so bad so especially when i was not feeling good um, when i was stressed or freaked out or you know worried about life and so the journey eventually led me after you know after i left the christian church there were no more rules it was just there, i was done there was no more guilt so i thought <laughs> yeah. you know I thought, well, no, you know, there's no church, there's no laws, there's no rules, and I'm free to be me. And I went and jumped headfirst into whatever I felt like. And, you know, was living at one point before my marriage to my first wife. Um, you know, at being a DJ, you can imagine in Los Angeles, you know, I was friends with some strippers and I was going to the party after hours parties out here in Los Angeles. and living a life of a rock star thinking I'm, I'm, I'm good, but I'm feeling this emptiness, to be honest with you. Even when I'm in this strip club, I'm wanting to be a helpful support. I'm wanting them to love me. I'm not trying to consume them, but I want to be in the mix of it. You know, I just want to be liked by the strippers. And this was, you know, this was the world I was creating. And when I got married, you know, I thought, well, now I have a wife. I won't be needing porn. And uh, that wasn't the case. For those that are married, you'll understand that doesn't go away. Um, and so I sought the rooms of recovery. I, I spent a good two years in, in what was called Sexaholics Anonymous and got to understand the cause and the roots of my addiction and worked that program uh, for a good two years. And I think the program is really helpful and it helped me to get, in, to, get to the roots that's when I started Al-Anon as well. I realized that I became, I was qualified for the rooms of Al-Anon, which is those who were affected by alcoholism. You know, my, the coping mechanisms of my parents influenced me growing up. And so I, I, I didn't know how to deal with life on life's terms. You know, life was scary at times. It was overwhelming. And so pornography was this way of self-soothing, was this way of, of bringing comfort uh, in those places. So in the rooms of recovery, I was actually on an awakening path already. So I understood that whatever I said, I am. And so it is. And so I actually early on in the rooms of recovery, I, I really had a problem with saying I am a sexaholic because I believe that continued to create the very experience of being an, a sexaholic. And so I knew that I was, I created, I'm working on recovery 
And so getting in touch and being in the conversation of men who are working with this and really revealing the stories and then taking off the mask was so helpful. And that's why I applaud in this group, men who are really trying to come together go, we want to be better men and we want to be free. And there's a safe place where men can come together and, and share what's going on and take off the masks. And so being in that journey and getting in touch with that, it gave me so much freedom. But I'll be honest with you, where it took a, a quantum leap was my relationship that I'm in now, it was union, it was this divine union. Because I knew when my, my wife and I first met, I knew I was here to liberate myself from this. I was a, you know, we hear the term light worker or somebody who's here to, to be a benefic a beneficent, benef beneficent, benef <laughs> a beneficial presence on the planet. You know, you want to be good. You want to do good. You want to be a good man. I know for me, that's where I was. I just want to be a loving man, but there's things that are going on in my life. And so I knew that I was here to make peace with porn. Like, why is this going on? And so I started reading books that called The Dark Side of the Light Chasers by Debbie Ford. I started really understanding the darker side to my life and to why this is here. And so, you know, they, I, I do a lot of personal shadow work. I believe in shadow work. I think it's, an, um, it's a very powerful process to go deep into your demons and face them, go into your cave and go, what do you want to tell me? What is here? Because that's where my gold and my relationship with my wife today is, where my liberation and my creativity is. But going into, going into the shadow and not suppressing it because we hide it, we push it away. And I think that causes more damage. But when we face it head on and ask, what are you trying? What do you want? What is this? You know, I continue to find my liberation there. And, um, and bringing grace. Grace is my favorite word. You know, grace upon all of us, you know not judging yourself so harshly, but under, just understanding why is this here? You know, I think everybody that's in this group, I would imagine wants freedom. You know, you, you want to live the noble life. You want to live, you know, you want to be an example to your children or you want to be a good husband or you just want to have a great relationship with women. You don't want to be every time you're looking at a woman just staring at her boobs, you know what I mean? You want to be able to go, how can I see you and not just want to consume you? You know, there is there is liberation there. And I think just facing it head on and, 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 and that's been, I think, the biggest liberating path for me. Beautiful, beautiful. Whenever we take a look at at our process, you know, for me, whenever I looked at my relationship with pornography, <clears throat> that's kind of why I asked you to share a bit of your journey, you know, uh, what I found was like, you know, porn was this thing. It was like a, it was creating almost like a, a, a ceiling, I feel, in terms of my spiritual evolution, you know, it was something that I kept kind of, you know, you'd be fine on it for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months, but it's something you kind of kept, um, or something I kept running into, and I felt it was like hijacking me uh, in many ways, in terms of my spirituality, in terms of my work, in terms of my relationships, um, and, and, I really feel that that's why I was kind of trying to hit on your process a little bit, but I really felt that, you know, there was this correlation between elevation or evolution of consciousness and this ability to kind of just very naturally navigate ourselves away from pornography. And I, I found that as, you know, you talked about this, this, there's something in us that's calling us to be better men, to, to live in higher levels of consciousness and higher levels of being. And, and to me, that's, that's this common denominator. That, that's what I would call God, you know, that we can all relate to. Whatever it is that calls us forth, that calls us into greater versions of ourselves, that is, it's, some people call it their conscience, you know. It's like our North Star that calls us into greater versions of being. And I, I, I found that through following that, um, I was able to kind of navigate myself away from porn more naturally. Um, but it was definitely something that continued to hijack me spiritually. Can you speak to that at all? Totally, totally. And that's kind of like what I was saying. Like we, you know, you, you have this desire to, 
you know, you get, you, you, we've had it. I know we've all had it many, many times. You're like, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. This is not helpful. This is not helping me. This is not where my, you know, you said where your North Star is. Like, I know where, what I'm headed for and I keep getting uh, sideswiped. You know, it could be stuff you see on the internet. It could be a film you watch. It could be whatever. But I think that there's that, you know, it, <clears throat> And I want to back, just back up for a second, because I know that my languaging can, you know, Matt and I were talking about, I want to be as universal in my conversation. You know, when I say Christ, when I say Jesus, it is an energy and it's something, it's a personal thing for me. But I also, we talked about Kirtan and Buddha and, 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 and it's this energy. It's, it's really just energy and it's really love. I call it love, just simply. But that, that, that desire to... expand that love would always be like there's something right there on the cusp it always seemed like even i you know this there's there's been months there's been years there's been quality of time but i feel like anytime i'm at a threshold i'm at a breaking point it's right there there's the with call the saboteur there's this there's this energy inside of us that just wants to knock us down it seems like or we don't want to break, you know, expand to a greater capacity. So we, we, we keep ourselves small. You know, there's this, it's the called the saboteur. Um, and I found myself in those places many a time. Um, trying to gauge my question. Help me out here, Matt. So what's, what are you asking specifically? I think specifically, uh, or, or maybe generally, I'm looking, I was just looking for, you know, I found that through our process, right, um, that, that we utilize in the group to kind of help men navigate, it was, it, it's kind of a, on one hand, what we, what we found to be helpful is that, you know, if we can create some, if we can create some space for, through like accountability, uh, through the pornography use, and, and help the man to evolve, right, um, consciously help help a man to evolve um spiritually that that there was there's was something that would happen there that kind of um would would more naturally allow pornography to fall away you know it's yeah. kind of like yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's kind of like the same way um you know maybe when you're younger you would smoke cigarettes you know and then you kind of got away from it a, a little bit and then when you went back and smoked a cigarette after after a month, they were kind of like less appealing. Same thing with mm -hmm. like junk, with, with eating poorly and junk food and stuff like that. I don't know, this, this seems, to, seems to me to be, uh, they go hand in hand. Whenever we evolve more spiritually, uh, it, it elevate our levels of consciousness, um, the, the pornography seems to fall away um, easier. And also at the same time, the pornography seems to, to be something that stops us from, from elevating in terms of our spirituality yeah. or, or, or consciousness. I hear what you're saying. Yes, I think that the, um, I never thought I'd have as much liberty that I have today, to be honest with you. I, I continue to go, oh my God, I never thought I would be here. And so to go back and how did I get here? I think that's the question you're asking. Like, how did I get to this place? Right. And it is by, it is by spiritual practice, spiritual practice, spiritual practice. You know, one of my favorite teachers is Dr. Uh, Michael Bernard Beckwith. And he talks about discipline. You know, when I when I'm doing my spiritual practices, when I'm because we need discipline. You know, many of us have made grooves in our neural pathways on on the addiction to porn and what porn means and how we do it. And so we got to create something new. We've got to create a new neural net, a new neural pathway. And so meditation, prayer, communing with nature, being in service. Um, being in service is a big piece. You know, I find myself when I'm navel gazing on my own problems and I'm worrying about my life and who's not giving me attention or what's going on or whatever's going on in the outside world. If, if I'm looking down and saying, woe is me, I don't have what I need. I'm not seen for who I am. I'm, I'm more prone to want to do, I want to look at something or I want to go do something. But when I'm in service, I found it to be really helpful to give, to be thinking of others besides myself, mm -hmm. uh, to pay it forward. So, you know, those are, those things have created spiritual muscles in a sense, or conscious muscles to go. It just, it loses its sting. It loses its luster. You know, 
like it's like a, a cup, you know, if it's a filthy cup that we start putting clean water in, eventually yeah. it's just you just put clean water in and eventually all that stuff comes up. You know, I had a friend of mine who's a detox specialist and it's like, don't go on a diet. Just start putting fruits and vegetables in your life. Yeah. Just start putting good, healthy, loving stuff in your life. And the bad just kind of goes. It just kind of dissipates, dissipates. And so then, you you know, you might find yourself like, I'd I, I watch hours of porn. And now it's like, it doesn't hold anything. It doesn't hold any value. It doesn't hold that, you know, it's just, it's flat. And I think it's just because of the time. And then when you taste the sweetness of that thing that we call many names, when you taste that presence, it just, and, and then in your own being, you, you feel it. And then when you can commune in holy union with the beloved, that's a whole nother level. Now you're creating a container. It's like, I don't, that, that pales in comparison. And so it's a greater good. It, it call, you know, the ego almost plays in there. There's a, there's a good, there's a good ego and there's a bad ego that the, the ego is not, ego is our friend in a way we can guide it and let the spirit, you know, like the solar, solar plexus, the solar chakra, when we choose the higher will and not the lower will, right. When we allow that, it, it, it guides us. And, and I think I found that just porn loses its luster. It's not, mm -hmm. you know, we're, 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 we're wired to be attracted to women. We're wired to be attracted to sexual energy. We're sexual beings, you know? And so I've made peace with that in my own life and to point it in the right direction has been one of the biggest liberation pieces, I think as well. Beautiful. And I, I've got, I've got another point, which I think will, will dovetail nicely there. <clears throat> We talk a lot within the community and we explore, and I've explored myself and I know members of our community um, explore this idea of sex transmutation, the healthy uh, directing or redirecting of sex energy. Uh, we see it like I've, I've heard it in Kundalini, I've heard it in Tantra. Uh, I was first introduced to this idea whenever I ran, uh, when I read uh, Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich where he had a whole chapter on sex transmutation. And uh, I'd love if maybe you'd share a little bit about your, your ideas around that, your experience with that, maybe some, some things you could share with that regarding the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, it's a, um, you know, when I, even before I met my wife, uh, Heather, I knew that there was sacred sexual alchemy and I didn't, you know, it was kind of a, a dangerous territory for me at first because I was in the rooms of recovery, but I was finding going through something powerful about sexual energy and i want to learn because i know that i'm it's part of my path and so it's continued to evolve nowadays it, it is um you know there's there's a book called um the magdalene manuscript there's a book called perfect matrimony by samuel Hayawar. um these are books that i've been reading Caretza. Uh, it's an old ancient practice and it goes back to the Essenes, back to the times of, of, of Christ and understanding how to work with this energy. Um, but ultimately, in it is, it's about for me that, and this was blowing my mind because I was, you know, in, in the heyday of my addiction, I was probably releasing orgasms two, three times a day, you know, maybe four times a day. And now it's about retention it's about containing that and breathing that and so when i'm in union now it's what caressa really means it's latin for caress so when i'm making love with my wife if there is a, a a there's not a goal it's not about having sex to have an orgasm it's about communion it's about communing with this energy and and then you know getting to that 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 point back away and back away and breathing and allowing that energy to just, you know, visualize the energy moving through, cycling through, you know, and letting that. And I can tell you what happens is, is it's beyond what I can even explain in words because I'm still learning. I'm still in this process, to be honest with you, of going on this journey with in sacred union. Now, for men who are single and working with this energy, I'm not I don't have the guys there. I'm in, in, in union. I don't. You know, I don't use this energy. My my sexual energy is for my beloved. 
this is a container that we we hold and we alchemize together um, that I believe is next level. I believe that that's where you start connecting to Gaia, you start connecting to the earth uh, ley lines, you start connecting to the earth energies, the, the, the net, the, there's a field, an auric energetic field to, to this planet. And so when you're working in that field together in union, you know, you're communing with more than just you. Um, is my experience. There's there's something profound, and I'm still I'm on this evolutionary journey of this. I don't come mm-hmm. as a master of uh, sexual kung fu, as it's been called. And, yeah. You know, um, but I can tell you, my intention is you know there there is a lot of in my in my experience and my observation, and from my research, this energy has been used to destroy and divide and. And, and manipulate for selfish gain. And so for me, where I'm coming from, I just wanna, I wanna, I want it pure. I want it contained. I want it to feed our life, not to get what I need and to become powerful. It's really important, I think, to preface that, that when we come from purity um, and pure intentions of what is the purpose to harness that energy, um, you find yourself in a in a in a a more noble path, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so breathing techniques, you know, that's kind of where I go. You know, just I do a lot of breath work um, to keep that energy and knowing that. I think, and also Kundalini. We're talking about Kundalini energy. You know, at the base of where it is, we have stuck energy in different places, and so. You know, you might be early in your process, but there might be some power struggles or some sexual trauma or some wounds or some feelings of safety. Go back to the root of where you're feeling not grounded or safe in your life. And so this energy wants to move through. So it's a process of, of, of clearing out whatever you can do to clear out your energy centers so that this energy can move unimpeded. Um, that's, that's the work. That's the process. And that's unique to all of us. Um, but having those healthy channels where, you know, you've seen the caduceus, you know what I mean? So that, that you are that, that beautiful pillar the temple where those energies can move through, um, and not just explode because they call, you know, the orgasm, the tiny little death, you know, it's so, you know, we don't understand what we do when we release, but when we can retain it. Mm-hmm. It feeds our body, it feeds our souls, it feeds our energy centers, it feeds our life, it feeds our prosperity, it feeds our creativity, it yeah. feeds our unity with all of life. Beautiful, man. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, and, and again, I, I know you say you're not like, a, you know, maybe maybe it's like like sexuality or, or, or whatever is not like your area of expertise or, or, you know, specialty, but I do appreciate your perspective on it and, and what you have to share in that regard. And ha- have you ever experienced or explored or seen any any evidence of you know I've 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 heard and studied like this idea of like redirecting our sexual energy for with the intention of creation or manifestation. Do you have any experience around that? And what's your uh, experience? Absolutely. There? I mean, it's yeah. for us. You know, our intimacy time is a is a prayer time. Mm. You know, it is a it is a it is a prayer time that you know, in truth, like I have a thirteen year old. Uh, my beloved has two grown kids. We're not going to have kids. I had, after my first marriage, we're not, we're just physically not going to do that. That shop's right. been closed. So yeah. we're not in danger of creating children. We're not, there's the, we're not creating beings. Right. But we, we use this energy to create, you know, to really, um, and it's just, it's not even, we're not trying to manipulate the energy, to be honest with you. Right. You know, I often say like we're two kids playing in the garden, just pure innocence, pure wonderment, pure curiosity that it's not trying to to to, to do something. It's to be in this something, to be in this energy, to really be here now, to be present with your other. And and, and it, it, it transcends the mind and comes into a, a field that I can't even explain to you with my words, but I do know that our creations, like there's so much going on in our life right now at a time of quarantine and a time uh, of, of concern that our life is expanding. It's expanding prosperity. It's expanding 
in service. It's expanding in ministry. It's expanding in our reach. And I can point to it that this container is a living prayer field. Mm. You know, it's not just to have an orgasm. It's not just to have sex. It is communion with the divine. You know, it's really bringing that, that, that unified field with both of us um, with an intention just to love not to get anything, not to get my rocks off, not to get off, but to have communion truly to, to, you know, I love just touching her, just touching. That's what Kuretz is like, just allow your hands. You know, I heard yesterday, the hands are the antennas of the soul, mm. you know, letting your hands, like giving your beloved, just touching her. And you know, that alone, just that creating that energetic field. So that here you are, you created this field and your intentions, your desires, you can speak your prayers, you can speak them in there for sure. Um, but it's not something that we personally are going, okay, we want to, this communion time is for this purpose. Right, right. It's really, it's really present moment. It's really like knowing that the desires of our heart are already heard and known. So when we commute in that field, you're creating a magnetic radiant field that all that is good, all that is God, all that is love, all that is beauty is magnetized to that without needing to coerce, convince, manipulate the field. That's what I found. I mean, there's, 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 there's the power of intention. There's the power of focus and point what you are wanting to create in your life. And I think that there is helpful that that is, that can be helpful, but that's not my, experience where i use my time of intimacy for that purpose yeah. beautiful man thank you thank you yeah i mean what a what a drastic shift right from going uh going from like you know all of us you know being behind a computer sp screen looking at pornography all by ourselves you know it's a really self-serving act to to looking at the depths that we can go to you know through sexuality and communion with another and communion with the divine it's like it's it's like a it's a total opposite end of the spectrum yeah totally Beautiful, man. Totally. I, 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 I wanted to open up the opportunity for you as well um, to maybe share a little bit. Maybe this would dovetail nicely into sharing a little bit about some of the work that you are doing with your beloved. And uh, mm. I just want yeah. to open that up for you as well. Thank you, man. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, it's, um, you know, I, I, my intention is that is to liberate lives and to liberate us, to liberate us to live a, a life that is full of creativity, full of passion, full of purpose. And so we do that in, uh, I have a, a group called the Sacred Circle of Men. You know, I work with men on one-on-one, -on -one. I work with men in groups, um, and we work with couples, you know, especially couples. If you, if you find yourself stuck in the karmic patterns, we used to have a program called From Karma to Dharma, these karmic loops that we have, you know, getting into your true dharma, you know, to, to let loose, you know, we have seven gateways that we work with couples and individuals to move through so that you can awaken more love in your life, you know, because I truly believe love is the most powerful force in the universe. Love is the most powerful force in the universe. And so if you can access it inside yourself, because it first comes, you got to love yourself. And so working in the shadows, we work with the shadow stuff, we work with shadow projections, we work with you know, all these kind of things that, that can get us to, because when we're in relationship, this point, this, this porn issue is what keeps the war going on. And so there's the trust is eroded, the guilt and the shame level. You know, one of my favorite authors is David Hawkins, Power Versus Force. You know, we, we stay in that guilt, shame frequency a lot of times. And from that guilt and shame frequency, it's a frequency, it's a vibration, we continue to manifest things in our relationships that are problems, that are, are, are warring or, or we're not being fully integrous. We're not being fully honest and our women know it. They may not know if they may not have seen your history. They may not have seen what's going on, but they know inside their being. And so helping couples to come into that place of a safe grace space to both be heard. You know, we work a lot with the, uh, um, the Imago therapy, which is about learning how to really listen um, because we listen with attack and defense a lot of times. So we help couples come into a place where they can really truly both be heard. Um, but liberating lives, you know, if you're a single man and you're wanting to go like, I want to call that one in, I believe I'm here to, to have a divine union. 
what I do is help free you up, clear it out, coach you through it, you know, just like any coach would, a nutritionist coach, you know, somebody who's going to help you get better in your health, in your diet, your physical. What I help you through is your spirit, your heart, the wounds around the heart, the wounds around the hara, what it's called with men, you know, that the men, women have a womb, you know, we have a hara, we have a lot of energy there. And so coming into full balance and, and honoring that within yourself and, and helping men even, I think the biggest piece, guys, is really learning to honor the feminine energy inside you, you know? And so when you start honoring her within you, you're going to honor her in the without. And you get in touch with that, that, that energy that is intuitive, that is nurturing, that is gentle, that is, you know, that is that mother's love that lives within us, you know, and that's helped me another way to, to reach for a higher path of nobility. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'd, uh, I'd love to touch on maybe pornography and leadership for a moment. Mm. And, and for me, it's kind of a, it's twofold, you know, porn for me was something that as I, as I moved into leadership, in different areas of my life. You know, I do work in the prisons and the hospitals now and, and, and uh, you know, coaching other men and doing various other sorts of work. Porn for me was something that I, as I mentioned before, I felt really sabotaged me in my work. And I, and I feel one of the primary reasons was because even though I was still inherently worthy, right, to, to do the work and to be of service, I felt as though I wouldn't. I felt like when I'd go into the prison and, and, and know that I still got this issue hiding in the in the darkness of my life you know which i had a lot of shame and guilt and secrecy around it really affect my it, it affected my my level of um um what would the word be my confidence my my confidence but also my uh like my uh well i'm not sure what the word I'm looking for is but i i didn't feel worthy i guess my worthiness around leadership you know and i also found at the same time that moving into these higher levels of service, moving into higher levels of leadership, called me forth into being that better, greater version of myself. And it really was part of my process of leaving pornography behind. As I stepped more into my power and stepped more into my authentic service, I realized that like more and more that porn was not a fit for my life. Yeah. And, and any ideas you can share around maybe porn and leadership? Yeah. Well, thank you. That's that's a big piece I know for me. You know, I grew up. I remember seeing Jimmy Swagger and Jim Baker, you know, in the Christian churches. And, and I always had in the back of my head, like I knew I was going to be, I knew I had a calling in my life. I knew that I wanted to be a minister an evangelist at the time. I didn't know what it looked like. I just knew I had a calling, you know, for me personally. I knew that my life was going to impact a lot of people and to leadership, with, you know, being an older child, being, you know, I've always had leadership in my life. So I just knew that leadership was what my calling is, but I always felt like, oh my God, what if I become like a Jimmy Swagger? If I don't deal with this, I'm going to have this great fall. And, right. you know, it's been a nagging little thing. And I think, to be honest with you, there's been times where that great responsibility, that great leadership scares the crap out of me. You know, to be responsible for other souls in a greater capacity scares me. You know, so that saboteur, I don't know if anybody can relate to this, it, 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 you'll want, it almost comes in like, ah, I'm just going to play small. But that doesn't, it doesn't align, you know, and it can only go for so long. And then you're like, this something's got to go. Um, you know, I think where I know for me personally, I know this, this is a, this is my calling. This is my, this is one of my biggest, you know, you're, they say, you know, I heard Tony Robbins say, your mess is your message. My mess that I've made of my own personal life in my, you know, my financial life, I believe that I often say purity is prosperity, pure, you know, when you're in that place, because you feel that when we're sabotaging ourselves, or we're going back to these things, we do, we dip down, we descend, and we can't rise and really reach the people. But now at a time, especially now, and I want to presence this, whether you believe in astrology or not, Venus is in retrograde, which means the planet of love, is in the shadow it's really in the dark so it's time to love our shadows it's time to go deep into understanding this aspect of ourselves and to expand that and so knowing that this is 
you know, if we're going to really lead men, <laughs> we have to be integrous. Integrity is so important. Transparency, humility. Um, we're only as sick as our secrets, as they say in the rooms of recovery. And, you know, to, there, there are men out there that, that can lead men into tantric and, and practices and, and bless it. There's many rooms in our father's mansion, as they say, but to really what, what is needed in this world is men who hold that chivalric code, that code of guardian, guardian, the sacred, guardian, the sacred energy, guardian, and not, you know, we've spent to, so much time as, as men, the patriarchy, consuming the feminine, consuming that energy, that it's time for us to rise up and, and step into it, especially now on this timeline where there's so much shadow projection and we're hurled, you know, we've got the Jeffrey Epstein's, the, the Weinstein's, the, the Pizzagate, whatever you believe about all that stuff that's going on, there is a distortion around sexual energy. So it's important for us men that are here now, they're saying we wanna rise up and, and, and step into true divine leadership of our own life, you know, but I know that I keep myself accountable. I join this group. I have these kind of conversations. I have men in my life that I keep accountable. I talk about the shadow. I keep exposing this because this needs to be exposed and not be kept in the dark and kept in the secret. Um, and, and we're only as strong, you know, when we're, when we're open, you know, when we're revealing, we help other men reveal. We help other men give permission to do it because it's been kept in the secret. And, and because it's kept in the secret, the guilt and the shame and the depression rise and, and the place of feeling like I can't really reach the life I want to live and I'm bound by this. This is what I know Matt and I, I believe we share in the same common goal is to help you brothers liberate your life from this and to step into true divine leadership in your own life, in your own community, in your own home. You know, your, your beloved wants you to lead, wants you to take charge in a holy way, not in a, an oppressive way, but in a righteous way. And that doesn't mean forceful, you know, that just means you're, you're, you know, they know, I mean, my beloved has wept in my arms because of the places and spaces I've gone in this path of nobility, in this path of purity. It just softens her and her body opens up and she opens up and life opens up when we show up. And, um, maybe going off on a tangent i'm not sure no, it's but. great it's great brother thank you you're, you're flowing yeah. man i appreciate it appreciate it uh yeah brother well i, I appreciate you so much we're, we're drawing close to an hour here so i want to honor your time as well um i just want to open up the space for you to maybe uh, offer any any kind of closing comments or ideas and also want to give mm -hmm. you the opportunity to share specifically where where the brothers in the community might be able to connect with you and, and, and your work yeah thank you mm -hmm. um this is a journey we're just beginning you know we have eons and we're clearing generations of our we're clearing the sins of our fathers and we're, we're we're clearing the way for our sons and their sons and it's a it's a big titanic to shift but we do it together you know the time of the lone wolf is done we must band together as a band of brothers you know i call them foxhole relationships you know I welcome foxhole relationships with brothers that we are in there together, that we got each other's back, that you're not here. You know, I have a, a sacred circle of men on Facebook. You can find me there. You can go to thepowersoflove.com, thepowersoflove.com. Reach out there and, and say hello um, and see what we're up to, see what I'm up to, see what my beloved and I are up to. Um, the, the places where you can come together with men like-hearted like -hearted men and to come together is, is really the goal, the key to, to liberate because we can't do it alone. Um, and um, yeah, that's just, I think that, that that's really my heart. It, I, I pray that something in here has helped you. You know, I don't, as I often say, I may not be a smart man, but I sure know what love is. You know, I come, as a, as a walking the path of mastery. I know that walk, I knew I came into this plane this time to be a master. And that just means master my own body, master my own mind, master my heart and master my emotions. You know, this emotional feels what causes us a lot of times to go to our addictions. And so we are emotional beings, brothers. I know we've been told a lot of times that we're not, but we are 
probably more emotional than women a lot of times I've heard, you know, and we just, we're learning how to navigate the emotional field, the energy, E, energy, emotion, this emotional field. That's actually what creates in life is, is emotion, the emotional field tapped into the mental field. And, um, but if you need help and you need support, you know, I know that this group is a powerful support. I applaud you, Brother Matt, for what you're doing and, and bringing, you know, just a, a daily, you know, just feeding this group and let's bring men to this group. You know, I'm not about, it's not about my group. You know, it's not about that. We're in the Aquarian age. What does that mean? It means conscious co-creation. You know, we don't have to have our little thing and your little thing. This is like, you figure the flower of life. It's like, it's coming together. Spheres are coming together and we are more together than we can be apart. And that's a song that my beloved sings and I love it. It's true. We're more together than we can be apart. And so bond together, band together, and, and, you know, know that you're not alone. You're not alone. In this time where depression and suicide is high, just know you're not alone. Speak up. You know, I just had a brother take his life this last week. And I know it was pretty some heavy, you know, men were trying to, to do our best to, to go out there and provide for our families and to take care of us. And there's a lot of pressure on us as men to be that. You know, and we're redefining that. It doesn't always have to be that. We're learning that, you know, that balance, you know, but it's that when we come into our God spark, our sense, you know, that core and it's thriving and we're making good choices and we're proud of who we are. We're not perfect, but we're making better and better choices and we're living in the light. We're living in transparency. When we live in that place, only good, only light, only power comes rushing in. But we have a little bit of willingness to go towards that energy call it what you want and be plugged into that now you're in pure source now you're in like this light this is like what yogananda saw in his mind's eye you know that is the god spark that's god everybody it's not a, a white-headed bearded man <laughs> that's god and that's got a sound as well so um i pray that this has been supportive i thank you brother for just opening up this conversation. I see me and you, and I know you see me and you. We are one. And uh, um, and if I said something that offended anybody or said something stupid, it's okay. I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, brother. We, we appreciate you so much, brother. I appreciate you being here. I honor you. Um, I thank you for the work that you're doing and uh, the gifts that you're sharing with the world brother man so thank you so much and i look forward to continued dialogue with you yes me too i'll see you in the group see thank you, you brother. See you soon, brother peace thank all you. right bye-bye